Howdy everyone, my name is Avram Plaker, and welcome back to my Fusion 360 tutorials for cat design. So, I want to remind everyone, my goal by next week is to reach 70 subscribers. Um, that being said, uh, I've reached uh, about 50 subscribers as of right now, and my watch hours have nearly doubled per video. So I do want to thank, I, would, I want to give a big thank you to everyone who is watching my videos and, and is subscribed to my channel. Uh, so let's begin. So we're going to be going over in this tutorial rib, web, and emboss. Uh, rib and web are almost exactly the same, but have slightly different purposes. And then emboss is just used to take a flat feature and uh, and put it into a shape or pull it out of a shape. So we'll begin with rib, rib and to begin we'll make a sketch put that on our y-x axis. I will make two two-point rectangles. One will be 100 by 15 and the other will be 15 by 100. We can just use the keys on our keyboard to type this in so we can just do 15 on this one. Press tab to switch and do 100. You can press enter now and then to trim these two intersections that are protruding from our sketch We'll click the trim hotkey up here, and we'll just trim those pieces. Now we can say finish sketch. We can take our sketch here and extrude it about 50 millimeters. You can go however much you want, but I would go at minimum 50 millimeters just for this tutorial. Now we can click OK. Now we'll go to the other side of our sketch, and we'll click this face. Now I'll press create sketch, and it creates a sketch plane directly on our face. Now what we'll do is we'll create a two point rectangle, we'll make this one a 50 by 50. Now we'll say finish sketch, and we'll use a new tool that Fusion 360 opened up in, this, in the extrude tab, which is thin walled extrude. You click here for thin extrude, and now when you extrude your shape, it creates a box. You can set the wall thickness to however much you want, but for this tutorial, let's set it to one millimeter. You want this set to join. And you can either have the wall location outside or inside, or it can be centered. I choose inside to make it smooth, but you can choose whichever one you want. And I will click OK. So to do rib, rib will click on this face and we'll create a sketch. And now we'll use our conic curve. The reason I'm using conic curves for these tutorials is because rib provides a support for an, a shelf, whether that's at 90 degrees, 60 degrees, 110 degrees, whatever that is, rib is used to support um, shelves and keep them from falling apart when pressure is put on the edge. So to make our conic curve, we'll click here and we'll go exactly 45 degrees across and we'll click here and then we'll go up to about two millimeters diagonally and we'll sharpen this just a bit. However, due to the curvature of this, I would recommend you actually set this a little bit more down about halfway there and then going up to our point there. Now you can click enter. What we'll do is we'll finish our sketch here since that part's done. And we'll create our rib. You see we only have one select button. So we'll select our curve here. And make sure you have this set to depth and this set to one direction. Now you need to flip the direction so that this is pointing outwards, not inwards. I need to pull this along to the edge and then pull this outwards. You have two control tabs. One controls the length along which it pulls and the other controls the width. The width is called depth for this. Um, Fusion 360 puts their own labels on things. So if my terminology is slightly different, don't worry, it's always in the tab here. So we'll set that to two millimeters. And our thickness we want 
to be all the way to the end. You see this is flush with the edge here. And we can press OK. Now as you can see, we have a support here that if any pressure is applied here, this support will bend and flex until it hits the back wall here, and then it'll act as a spring to push this back up. Now we'll use our web tool. To use our web tool, we'll go to the inside face here at the back, and we'll create a sketch. Now I'll create two conic curves on the inside. We'll go to one corner, and the corner below it, and then we'll go to the midpoint. Now we'll press enter, and we'll create another conic curve exactly the same but opposite. So we'll go to this corner, directly down, and back to the middle. And I click finish sketch. Then we'll open up our web tool, and we'll select both of our conic curves. Now that we have those set, we'll set in depth. We'll set this, we need to flip direction first. You need to make sure that both of your arrows are pointing how you want them to. If your arrow is pointing backwards into your shape, it won't work. So you need to make sure that it's pointing upwards. Now you can draw this up. Use this arrow to draw it outwards. We see this is far too thick. So we'll set our thickness down to two millimeters. And our height, we do need to draw down a bit. And there we go. It's flush with our shape. We have two conic curves there. However, due to our shape, we'll set these down to one millimeter. Now we have fairly thin shapes that don't add too much material or weight to our object but provides sturdy support and an internal spring. Now I'll select OK. And now we'll go on to using our emboss slash deboss tool. To do that, we'll go to our shape here. We'll click on this bottom face here. And we'll create a sketch. Now we'll use our three point arc. And our three point arc places a start point an end point, and then a point there. It's somewhat like the conic curve, except unlike the conic curve, it um, it has more of a spherical shape. So we'll set our shape there to be roughly two millimeters up from the center point. Now we'll create our text. And we'll do text on path. Our path will be this curve here, and we want the placement to be below the path. We want our height definitely to be smaller, so we'll set that to 5 millimeters, and we'll center the text. Now we'll set this as an emboss, and we can select OK. Now we'll say finish sketch, and we'll click our emboss tool. Now in our emboss tab, we need to make sure that we have emboss selected and not deboss selected. Deboss I'll show in just a few seconds. So our sketch profiles, we'll select our text here. And our faces, we'll select this face here. You don't need to change anything else, except for if you'd like the depth to be um, bigger, you can change it to five millimeters if you like, but you can keep it at two millimeters for now. Don't change anything else. I'll do an in-depth tutorial into using all of these features here as well as all the features in rib and web but this is just a basic overview of how to use them and you click ok and you can see our text is embossed into our shape along the path that we wanted now we'll create an, our deboss text so we'll click on that face and we'll create another sketch now we'll create another three point arc and we'll set our two endpoints and our middle point two millimeters down from the start point. Now we'll create our text. And, we'll, and you see it's already selected to text on path. So all you need to do is select our text. And we see it is set um, upside down because of how the text is set. So we'll flip that vertically. And we see that does make some weird changes. So we'll also flip that horizontally. And you can see it's uh, sided like one. Now we can click deboss here, 
and make sure if there is vertical or horizontal switching, you just control these tabs here. Make sure that's centered. We select OK. Now we can click Finish Sketch. Now we can choose our Emboss tool. But instead of selecting our Emboss tool here, we'll select our Deboss tool. Our sketch profiles, we'll select our Deboss text. And our face will be this. Now you can see in the preview, it's cut into our shape. Again, don't change anything here. I'll go into an in-depth tutorial in the future. Now you can select OK. And you can see this did, did cause some random shadowing, but that can just be the program. If you save the file and restart, this should go away. Although I did switch to a different computer that is having some visual problems. So don't worry, as long as you have a decent computer, this type of error should not happen to you. But um, if you're using emboss and deboss, this type of error can happen, although it should be fixed if you just save this and close it and restart it. So that's a tutorial into emboss, deboss, rib, and web. Um, these are phenomenal tools to use that will give you a lot of, lot of advantage in creating supported shapes. And that's it for today. So please remember to like and subscribe and share this channel with your family and friends. Um, again, my goal is by next week to reach 70 subscribers, so please help me reach that goal. Um, that said, thank you. Uh, you can hire me on Fiverr for CAD Design 3D modeling gigs, or search me up on Kanoyo.com for tutoring. Thank you and have a good day.